day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice, my friends. Sunday morning, here we are, coming together from near and far. That's the way it should be. I've got family waiting for me. Every Sunday I'm glad to see their unity. And that's the way it should be. A great rousing song. Thank you so much, Jim. Welcome everybody to Unity of London. That's the way it should be. Super welcome. And most of us know each other. You'll see a couple of people wearing name cards. And I'll take mine off because it can be a little bit distracting if you're watching somebody, if I can get it off. This was a suggestion from Dawn because sometimes we have new people and they may not know our names. So if you don't have a name card and would like one, maybe you can get one later. Hmm. Whoops. <laughs> All of the qualities that we hope to present to the world are on that, on that placard. And the first one is love. If we live in love, speak in love, think of love, that changes the world. It changes our world for sure. So with love, joy, and kindness, we greet everybody in the room today. And I invite you just for fun, just to look at somebody near you, give them a big smile and say, welcome to unity. Okay, and to Dorothy walking down the aisle, welcome to unity. Um, we grow in curiosity, and our curiosity keeps us vibrant and alive. Uh, our self-expression, our ability to share what's on our mind with thoughtfulness and some candor allows others to do the same. And unity is, in fact, a positive path to spiritual living. Our five basic unity principles are up there on the screen. I invite you to share them as we read them together. God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. I am naturally good because God's divinity is within me and in everyone. 
I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. Through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. So the connecting with God is essential. It's like going to your tap to have a drink of water or your distillery or wherever you go for a drink of water. I drink. <laughs> Whoa, that's not very principal, is it? <laughs> I do my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. And how do we make a difference? Make a difference when we practice being the change. Change can be tricky and difficult, but it usually brings out the best in us and in others. It requires strength and courage to be the change. We inspire others as we change. <clears throat> and sometimes change requires several taps. <laughs> we coexist. We coexist because we provide fellowship and education for everyone from all walks of life regardless of their background, their color, their language, even their way of living. And in that way, we are absolutely, absolutely inclusive, not exclusive, inclusive. And to me, that was one of the driving forces that brought me to unity and has caused me to stay. And now we rejoice with another song from our dear Jim. Let's be out of here. 
Raise the roof right off this building. Thanks, Jim. Our prayer chest always awaits your intentions. And the affirmation or the claiming of the good that we hope to see in our lives is connecting with divine presence. So we invite you to write the name of someone close to your heart and put them into the box. You don't need to put anything else, uh, just the name. And that affirmation is not denying that hard stuff happens. It's denying its power over you. So when we put the name in the box, we are claiming for that person perhaps serenity of spirit or strength, you know, you would love to see in that person. So we invite you to do that. And I invite you right now to close your, mi close your minds. <laughs> Leave your minds open. <laughs> oh, dear. Leave your minds open. <laughs> close your eyes if that feels comfortable. And just breathe into the moment. This month we hold in prayer Unity of Vancouver and Unity of York Region Study Group. This month, the last Sunday in October, we consider the month just past and the month in front of us with anticipation, with discernment with an acceptance and a relishing of who we are as divine presence in this world. A celebration of our opportunities to share love, to share light, wherever we are, whatever we're doing. We hold in prayer our beloved members of Unity of London, those who are with us today, those who may be traveling, any of our members who may be feeling not well in body or spirit. We affirm their divine essence, their inner energy. And I invite you to take a moment to whisper the names of those close to your hearts. We also hold in prayer today all leaders in the world our political leaders who are facing election time, our spiritual leaders, our health leaders, our leaders in education, and each of you who is a leader. And that's all of you. You may not consider yourself a leader, but what you do is leading. What you do not do is also leading. For these and for all of our prayers, with joyous, grateful hearts, we say, Amen. And it's my pleasure to welcome up our platform assistant for the day, our dear Don Briglio, who will be introducing our guest speaker and sharing a daily word.
Thank you, Pauline. <coughs> Good morning, all. Tony has asked me to read the daily word from October 22nd rather than the one from the 27th. So you'll find out why when you hear his message. The 22nd um, daily word was entitled Powerful. Living the truth of God makes me powerful beyond measure. I am one with the divine. This means everything God is, love, peace, power, I am too. This awareness keeps me grounded in spiritual truth, especially when the weight of the world feels heavy upon my shoulders. When I identify with the things of the world, I may feel powerless. At the whim of other people's preferences or at the mercy of uncertain circumstances, but when I see myself as the divine being I am, I transcend the limits of the world, rise above its concerns, and keep its troubles in necessary perspective. I am a powerful spiritual being in the world, but not of it. I feel the life, love, and power of God expressing as me I bless the world by using its power for the good of all beings. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So it says in Psalm 73, verse 26. So today's speaker, Tony, is a lifelong student and teacher of spirituality, metaphysics, and abundance manifestation, an experienced mentor, speaker, trainer, and the author of the book Using the Law of Attraction. Tony has been an active member of Unity of London since 2012 and is a past president of our board of directors. With his message today, if we saw souls instead of bodies, Please help me to welcome our dear Tony Arvidas. Thank you, Don. And good morning, Unity of London. All righty. Okay, as Don mentioned, Title my message today, If You Saw Souls Instead of Bodies. Now, I got that title from an article by Brianna West in her book, 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. I thought it was pretty neat. In this article, Brianna asked us, what would happen if we could see people not as bad, but as blocked? What would happen if we eventually returned to the knowing that we are all just energy fields? And where would we be if we realized that we were all from the same one? What would happen if we realized we really weren't all that different or separate at all? Well, today we're going to take a look at the essence of who we and others really are. We'll talk about bodies and souls and our intrinsic divinity. Now, we often hear that great sculptors chip away marble to reveal the underlying masterpiece. In the same way, I hope today we'll uncover the layers that are blocking the truth of our own very divine nature. Let's start with a question. How would you respond and act with people if you really saw them as souls, as divine beings, as energy fields interacted with you and all that is? Probably a lot different than you usually do, right? Next time you get cut off in traffic, instead of giving the offending driver the one-fingered salute, <laughs> you send to him or her, your kindred spirit, a bit of love. Now let's look at the basics. We are God particles. We are a trinity, spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit, we each have a soul, and we live in a body. Spirit is the I am, the individuality. The body is soul expressing, 
and soul includes the conscious and unconscious or subconscious <laughs> minds. Soul makes the body, and the body is the outer expression of the soul. Let's investigate that a little bit more. According to Wikipedia, the term soul refers to the non-material essence of a person, which includes one's identity, personality, memories, an immaterial aspect or essence of a living being that is believed to be able to survive physical death. It's used to refer to the immaterial, the spiritual, or the thinking aspect of a person, as contrasted with the person's physical body. The concept of the soul is generally applied to humans, like us, although it can be assigned to other living or non-living entities. Think about your dog or your cat. When you look into the animal's eyes, do you see its soul? Do you feel its love? I do, but I digress. The metaphysical meaning of the soul, according to truth unity, is a man's consciousness, the underlying idea back of an expression. In its original and true sense, the soul of man is the expressed idea of man in divine mind. And by the way, when I use the term man, I'm referring to all humanity, male, female, non-binary. Now, the metaphysical meaning of body, on the other hand, is the outer expression of consciousness, the precipitation of the thinking part of man. God created the idea of the body of man as a self-perpetuating, self-renewing organism, which man reconstructs into his physical body. God creates the body idea, or divine idea, and man by his thinking, makes it manifest. As God created man in his image and likeness by the power of his word, so man, as God's image and likeness, projects his body by the same power. Quite an interesting explanation, isn't it? I found another non-metaphysical definition of a human body in a book I recently read called Akin by Emma da Donahue. What are any of us but chemical algorithms when we're alive? Oxygen and hydrogen stiffened by carbon. Some nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, magnesium. Molecules forming their equations, temporarily following the rules for how to make a human. Let's move on. Here's the metaphysical meaning of divinity. It's the true spiritual man, the Christ that is the real of every man. Now, unity principle number two, which we heard earlier, states our essence is of God. We are inherently good, and we are a spark of divinity. In Practical Metaphysics, A New Insight in Truth, Eric Butterworth, the great unity teacher, expands on that. God is me. Does that surprise you a little bit, he says? Whatever else God is, God is me. I am the activity of God expressing itself as me. God is life, and I am life manifesting as my body temple. God is intelligence, and I am intelligence in the form of the wisdom of my mind. God is power, and I am that power in the form of my strength, my creativity, my ability to form, to shape, to build. God is love, and I am love expressing in and through as my loving heart. No matter where you are in the ladder of life, he says, no matter what you may be experiencing, no matter how many heartaches you have had or how many conflicts you've been involved in, right now there is more in you. There is divinity in you. The kingdom of God is within you. The divine reality of you is the Christ of you. And by you, Eric meant everyone. We are all one. Despite the appearance of separate bodies, individual personalities, different pursuits, we are our one humanity. 
Like a prism divides light into a rainbow of colors, we humans express God in infinite ways. One God, one humanity, many stories. If we saw souls instead of bodies, the world would likely look vastly different, wouldn't it? Reverend Linda Martella Wissett encourages us to awaken to and realize that we are fully divine as well as fully human. A duality. She tells us in her book how to pray without talking to God. Much of the time, we forget our divine identity in the moment of a human experience. We become mesmerized by material facts, feeling overcome by their seeming power. Unconsciously, in that moment, we are identifying with a circumstance rather than with the divine. The divine power within us is greater than the power of the world. I have forgotten my divine identity during challenging times, she writes. Various times, I seem not to know I possess a divine identity. But each time that I come back around to my true nature, I am spiritually stronger. She then asks us, what do you know about your true nature? Are you just flesh and bones which will one day deteriorate, die, crumble into dust? Are you a spontaneous creative project like a sandcastle on the beach that's artistically crafted and then disappears with a single wave crash on the shore? Are you a pointless set of circumstances, random and inconsequential? Or are you divine? In the Daily Word, in addition to what Don earlier read, we read, I recognize the value of every person on the planet and believe all people deserve to live in peace and harmony. As I honor the divinity of each person I encounter, I look beyond surface differences in backgrounds and grow in empathy and understanding. I know that all people are expressions of God. I let this realization take root in my thoughts and affirm we are all one in spirit of love and peace. I am foremost a spiritual being, living as the divine being I am. I see the world and its creatures as wondrous and its people as fellow spiritual beings. I recognize the Christ within each person I greet. I have faith. We are one in God and deserve to be treated with respect. We further read, no matter what may be going on in my own life, I show kindness, generosity, and patience to everyone. Today, I celebrate my belonging as a divine being, a child of God. I look beyond appearances and even my own preconceived notions to see my fellow divine beings. I honor their unique gifts, just as I would want them to honor mine. We belong together. We belong to one another. We're all part of the family of God, no matter my station in life, my personal history, or my particular circumstances. I am a divine member of this human family. I honor the intent and inherent worth of every being, knowing all life is sacred. With gratitude, I behold each person as a unique expression of the one presence and power that animates life. I build bridges of compassion by seeking to understand those who are different from me. With an open heart, I live with curiosity and acceptance, cultivating compassion for everyone I meet. Unity Minister Saba Mushwenzi tells us, the truth is that everyone has a divine identity. Even though we're expressing in human form, that's only a portion of who and what we are. The time has come to escape from the mindset and belief that we are limited by our five senses. 
we don't want to deny our physical situation or condition, do we? But we also don't want to see it as the totality of our being. It's time to awaken to accept the truth, which is that we are fully divine and begin to express the divinity that is within us. Indeed, that is us. Ralph Waldo Emerson, I'm sure you've heard of him, often quoted by Unity's Charles Fillmore, also viewed the self as divine. This concept became a main component of the Unity philosophy, which emphasizes the experience of God through the act of connecting with the higher self, or Christ spirit, which is present in every person. Unity teaches that Jesus was an example of how that Christ spirit could be manifested totally in human form. Now, I found this quite interesting. Did you know that one of the main charges of heresy that has been levied against Unity Church stems from that same teaching, that everyone has a spark of God within them, and that Jesus Christ provided an example of what everyone should be able to do. Reverend Elizabeth Longo, in the little Unity book, on healing, 1,000 different ways, reminds us that we are much more than just physical beings. She asks us to remember that we are spirit and to recognize our perfect wholeness. She goes on to say, at the core of our being, we are whole and complete, for we're made in the image and likeness of our creator. However, through the human condition and our childhood experiences, we accumulate limiting beliefs and blocks, don't we? We bottle up our emotions, cover up our wounds, thinking they'll go away. We forget how powerful we are. We already talked about that, didn't we? Our work is to heal the wounds, feel the feelings, and change the beliefs that are causing our suffering. Now, what or who do you see when you look at yourself in the mirror? In my head, I'm often quite young, articulate, reasonably good-looking, and fairly good shape in my mid-30s. But when I look carefully in that mirror, oh dear. What I really see is this older guy with thinning gray hair, wrinkles, age spots, hair growing out of his ears and nose, Wild, bushy eyebrows that need trimming, prostate issues, occasional dribble, <laughs> reading glasses, decreasing muscle tone, various aches and pains, reduced libido, sagging skin, and always seeming to be searching for the proper word. But I also see a divine creature. Now, what do you see when you look at your own image? What do you see when you look at your partner, your lover, your best friend, your greatest enemy, that lying politician, that homeless addict? Do you see a beautiful soul? We should, shouldn't we? But what about people who we define as evil? And there's certainly been a few, right? Names that come to mind, Hitler, Stalin, Osama bin Laden, Idi Amin, how about North Korea's Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin? By the way, on the internet I found a list of 870 of the all-time worst people in history, ranked by evilness. Donald Trump came in at about 455. Anyway, is there any divinity in them? Do they have a soul? Yep, believe it or not. You see, evil characters often play crucial roles in the growth and development of our species. Their actions can lead to greater good or enlightenment, suggesting that even an evil person can serve a divine purpose by challenging others to rise above adversity. Evil behavior can highlight societal issues, prompt positive change, Figures traditionally seen as evil can symbolize important lessons or truths about human nature, morality, 
the universe. They can serve as cautionary tales or embodiments of chaos that ultimately contribute to a greater understanding of the divine. As we read again in Daily Word, everyone is God's living expression, a reflection of divine glory, just as I am. Even when my limited human perception has not perceived it, my faith shows me this truth about every person. Now, according to author and, and metaphysician Dr. Joan Borisenko, people are a mixture of qualities. They are exemplary in some ways and still have much to learn in other ways. We have a tendency to judge people in an either-or way, enlightened or not, saint or sinner. We need to consider every person as a potential teacher and every encounter as a learning experience. We should ask the question, what can I learn from this person or this situation, no matter what it is? Joan tells us that each day she recites the following prayer. Divine source, may the eyes of my spirit open this morning so that I see every person I meet today as deserving the greatest respect and love. To see each and every person as my own dearest child. May I see every person as my brother or sister. So what if we really saw souls instead of bodies? Saw everyone as deserving love and respect? Well, according to chat GPT on the internet, our interactions might become more genuine and meaningful. First impressions would be based on the essence of a person, leading to deeper conversations and connections from the outset. Society might place greater importance on qualities like kindness, integrity, empathy. Success could be measured by how much one contributes to the well-being of others rather than material wealth or status. Take that, Elon Musk. With souls visible, biases based on race, gender, age, and other physical characteristics might fade away. People would be judged by their inner qualities, which would foster a more inclusive and understanding society. Seeing someone's soul might allow for greater understanding of their struggles and their pain. This could lead to a culture of forgiveness and healing as individuals recognize the challenges others face, walk a mile in their moccasins. Art and music, literature might shift in focus. Artists could express the essence of the soul, as Jim does, rather than the physical form, leading to new forms of creativity that celebrate inner beauty. There might be a collective shift towards spiritual growth, self-discovery. People could become more interested in exploring their own souls, their own souls, other people's souls, fostering a sense of community and shared purpose. Individuals might feel more compelled to be authentic as their true selves would be visible to everyone. This could encourage honesty in relationships and a culture of vulnerability. Understanding the soul's perspective could change the way we handle conflicts. Negotiations might focus on finding common ground in values rather than on surface level disagreements. We should not forget that seeing souls rather than bodies leads to deeper connections in relationships. It encourages valuing qualities such as kindum, kindness, wisdom, integrity, over physical attributes. This perspective encourages compassion, understanding, empathy, as it promotes seeing beyond superficial differences and connecting with the deeper essence of a person. Ultimately, the idea of seeing souls instead of bodies encourages us to appreciate the richness of human existence. It invites us to consider how we engage with ourselves and others on a more meaningful level, because we're all part of God's masterpiece. In closing, let's listen to what spiritual teacher Mike Dooley tells us. The reason butterflies float, comets fall, 
fireflies light, trees grow, cats purr, tails wag, is because each is reflecting something in you at the very moment of perception, disguised by the elements, captured in time, to remind you of your sublime divinity. Remember your divinity and that of others, as you see souls instead of bodies, because the spirit of the source lives in us all. That power, as Jim said, is everywhere. And with that, let's go into meditation. The guided portion today is based on a practice proposed by Reverend Carol Warnemund in the Unity publication, Healing 1000 Different Ways. Gently close your eyes, breathe slowly. Pay attention how your breath feels as you exhale and inhale. Relax the muscles of your face and neck, especially those behind your eyes. Now, imagine yourself in a beautiful meadow covered with flowers and dotted with trees. A meandering path leads beside a gurgling stream. Watch yourself step onto that path. Feel the textures beneath your feet. Walk on smooth, packed dirt. Step on stones. Scramble over boulders. Notice that you're climbing upward. Your breath quickens and you begin to tire, but you continue your trek. Finally, you find yourself on a mountaintop. Experience your sense of elation. Embrace the fulfillment that you feel. Breathe in the beauty around you. Look back at that difficult path you've traversed and laugh. Laugh with joy at what you have accomplished. Lift your arms in gratitude, calling in a delighted and loud voice, thank you, I did it. Claim the wholeness, the divinity that you inherently are. See your beautiful radiance shining forth. Now take a few minutes to feel the real you. gradually come back to our world of earthly delights, secure in the knowledge that all is as it should be, as you co-created it, the divine soul that you are. And so it is. Amen. just to breathe in that message that Tony brought so eloquently to us. What if we saw souls instead of bodies? Tony, what a beautiful message and one that we can take forever. Thank you very much for sharing. 
Uh, sharing that causes us to think and reflect and rediscover who we really are. You did that for us today. Thank you. And it's time for another song from our dear Jim. some music that will work for that. And you know that I often do write music for for you know, people. I, I, nothing came to me. So I went and looked through my songbook. And my goodness, there was a song that was almost perfect. Almost perfect. <laughs> and that starts, and I think this is really important. The first verse says, and I don't know who wrote it. I tried to find out. I couldn't find it. Take a look at the person next to you and say, I recognize the God in you. Now feel the love in the sanctuary, lift your voice and repeat after me. And when you get to that part, we're gonna do some repeating after me. I told you earlier that wasn't the, that last song was not your last uh, was not your last chore today, so <laughs> Take a look at the person next to you. I recognize the God in you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love. We come together. We come together. Get the person next to you who do it. Look at the person next to you. God loves you and I do too. You the love the sanctuary. Your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. Come together. In the name of love, we come together, we come together, together, in the name of love. From every walk of life, every creed and color, we should be alive, honoring the God in each other. Recognize the God in you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Let your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love, we come together. Perfect choices of music. Thank you, Jim. Again, rousing the roof. And sometimes after a service, do you ever go home and you go to bed that night and words keep filtering through your mind? And maybe it will be that very song, We Come Together in the Name of Love. Right now, uh, Kate and our president, Renee Sawar, are coming around to make a collection of your financial donations. <clears throat> We're always grateful to receive the donations that 
help us to keep our building healthy and strong, <coughs> heated in cold weather and cooled in warm weather. We are also incredibly grateful for the talent that you see shared and the talent that you don't see shared, uh, the effort, the time, the energy that goes on behind the scenes from our board members, our volunteers. And I invite you to again consider, is there a way that you could share something you're passionate about doing? And then it would be fun. It wouldn't be work. There is a prayer that will come up in a minute. Special announcements. Our prosperity blessing. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And now our special announcements. October is membership month, and if anyone has not signed our membership form at the back, please do so. The instructions are there. And it's a chance for you to celebrate being part of a community that is inclusive, loving, and fosters curiosity. We have our wondrous event coming up, November 15th, our dinner dance. Get your hippie on, <laughs> and uh, it will be a lot of fun. Uh, chance to celebrate peace and love. It's a fundraiser for unity, but it's also more important, a chance just to get together. And I'm sure that the tickets will be available fairly soon, $35 a person. All the funds go to help our unity, and the fun goes to help you and everybody you know. We are having a silent auction, and Lorraine is back now, so we're inviting people to bring items. You can see them listed up there. We're looking at small items uh, to bring them. They will be stored in the children's ministry room unless they're really valuable, and then Lorraine will take them home and bring them back for our dinner dance. Our Wednesday night music nights, I heard that last Wednesday was a fabulous night with a tribute to the Everly Brothers. Sorry I couldn't be here, but I heard that there were several Unity members out. And this coming Wednesday, we have Kevin Bacon's train. And I think that that musician is pretty unique. Jim Chapman has a penchant for bringing out musicians who are really wondrous. $10 that you cannot, you can't do much for $10 these days, but you can come here on a Wednesday night from 8 to 9.30 and just have fun, enjoy the music. Let us join together in this powerful prayer. The light of God surrounds me. I am the light. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love. The power of God protects me. I am the power. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. Yay, God. And we join in our peace song.
if anybody would like to come up and share their response to Tony's message, please do that. Here comes George. Yay, George. <laughs> Tony, that 